If you just got your hands on the Steam Deck, congratulations on upping your gaming experience. I hope that you find the same gaming joy on the Steam Deck that it has brought me. But the deck isn't really like other gaming PCs, and it's not really like other consoles either. It sits in this distinct middle ground where it doesn't neatly fit into either category. So that's where this video comes in. I want to make sure that everybody who uses the Steam Deck can take full advantage of the hardware and the software. So this video aims to be exactly that. Here are eight things that you can do with your brand new Steam Deck. And even if you've had your deck for a while, you might discover a few things here too. First up, this might seem obvious to some people, but you're going to want to download your games to your new Steam Deck. And you've probably had a few games in mind that you want to give a spin. But keep in mind that, at least for me, part of the fun of having the Steam Deck has been discovering my backlog. In fact, it's an ideal opportunity for finding your way through that extensive catalog of unplayed games that taunt you at every turn. I spent all this money on these games and I haven't played them. To find a list of your unplayed games, go to the All Games tab in your library, then press Y and choose the Hours Played option. Scroll down to the Unplayed header, and if you have a lot of games, just hold down until you see the word Unplayed flash on the screen. And from here, install to your heart's content. Depending on your internet connection and the number and size of games you've downloaded, this can take a long time to complete. At the moment, the deck doesn't have a screen off download function, so your best bet is to plug in your Steam Deck and it'll download the games and then shut off when it's done. Next up, upgrade your storage. Now, if you have a ton of AAA games, you might run out of internal storage. That's why Valve included an external upgrade solution, a micro SD card slot. Just purchase yourself an SD card, insert it, format it, and you're good to go. Now, which SD card you get is going to be up to you. Personally, I have two different SD cards. I have one loaded with a bunch of Steam games and the other with ROMs. Now, I have this one terabyte SanDisk A2 card that I've recommended here on the channel before. The other is this one terabyte Rocket SD card from Sabrent. They sent me this card and I have nothing but good things to say about it. Now, installing games onto your SD card is a pretty simple process. Insert your card and then format it if it hasn't been already. From here, you can just start the download process from your Steam library and you should see the screen to select where you want to install it. But there's also this other upgrade you could make, the internal storage. Now, to truth be told, I bought this 512 gigabyte uh, Steam Deck right here specifically because I didn't want to upgrade my internal storage. I was worried about the upgrade process being difficult and accidentally breaking my Steam Deck. And there's lots of evidence that people have been breaking their Steam Decks when they try to do upgrades because of lack of caution or whatever else. But when Sabrin sent me their Rocket 2230 1TB SSD, I decided to give it a try, and it was really easy for someone like me. Would I recommend that someone with zero experience disassembling small and sensitive devices give this a go? Categorically and emphatically, no. But as long as you have disconnected the battery and you ensure that the thermal pads don't move and you ground yourself before you start and while you're working on it, you should have no trouble upgrading your Steam Deck. And you can check out my whole video about the process here. Next up, exploring controller customization. Now, controller customization is a major deal. It's one of the things that define the Steam Deck and the Steam ecosystem in general. While something like the Switch allows you to swap buttons and the like, the Steam Deck gives you absolute control over the inputs here. Mapping touchpads to mouse input, enabling gyro aim when you have your thumb on the control stick, there's so much that can be done here with Steam input. And you can explore controller profiles made by the community too. I highly recommend taking a look at what's out there for your favorite games. You can use a community profile as your base and tweak it to your liking as well. But there are other options here too. You can configure your desktop layout by going to settings, controller, and then scroll down to the desktop layout. But it's even cooler. In the controller settings menu, you can swap A and B so that it behaves like a Nintendo system, or you can manage the controller's calibration. However, there's one more thing here that you should know about. Steam shortcuts. Holding the Steam button or the Quick Access Menu button for a moment will display a list of shortcuts. You don't have to wait for this menu to appear for the buttons to work though. The shortcuts will work no matter what. A few of my favorites are Steam up or down on the left joystick to increase or decrease the brightness of your screen respectively. You can also bring up the virtual keyboard using Steam plus X or Steam plus B as a long press will force quit the application. Holding the Steam button and the right trackpad will uh, simulate a mouse, and pulling the right trigger will click. Next up, installing non-Steam apps. 
Now, one of the biggest differentiators for the Steam Deck versus a console is that you can pretty easily install any application that you could possibly want. There are tons of tools out there to help you install games from other stores and get the most out of performance. For example, you can use Heroic to install games from Epic and GOG. You can use Lutris if you're looking for a way to easily install classic games or other Windows titles. You can also use Cryo Utilities if you want to get the best performance out of your Steam Deck. But the fact is, it's not just Windows software. There's a whole suite of Linux software that you can use on Deck too. Chrome is an obvious first choice. To enable Chrome, you can just go to the non-Steam Games section of your library, and it will prompt you to install Chrome if this is your first time in the library anyway. But you can also boot into desktop mode by holding down the power button and choosing Switch to Desktop. Then launch the Discovery App Center to peruse the available apps. If you want a list of the apps that are available without having a Steam Deck in hand, you can check out flathub.org and take a gander. A few of my favorite apps are Yuzu, which is a Nintendo Switch emulator, Flatseal, Discord, and ProtonUpQt. Next up is enable file copying. Now, if you've been searching for a way to copy files to or from your Steam Deck, you can check out my recent video on the topic. Essentially, you only need to install KDE Connect on your PC and then pair it with your Steam Deck. Then you can send files back and forth and a whole lot more. Check out that video up here for full details. Now, before we move on, I need to ask you a question. Why not like that smash button? When you do, you'll be well on your way to seeing more videos just like this. You can also subscribe to stay up to date with all of the fun stuff that we're doing here on the channel. Now, I want to give a special shout out to Matt Dancer, one of my top tier members over on Patreon. It's because of people like Matt that I'm able to keep the lights on here, and we do have a lot of lights, so thank you. Next up is connecting your headphones. While the Steam Deck speakers are impressive, sometimes you can't beat the experience headphones afford. Now, I've got these quiet comfort headphones from Bose that do the job and then some, allowing me to become even more immersed in the game I'm playing. And while these headphones do have a jack on the bottom that allows me to connect them to the deck's headphone jack, I prefer the wireless approach in most instances. So to connect these headphones, you first have to enable Bluetooth. Go to the settings and then Bluetooth tab and make sure that it's turned on. And then ensure that your headphones are in pairing mode. From here, scroll down and find your headphones. Now just hit A and your headphones are paired. Next up, let's talk about performance, enabling 40 hertz mode to be exact. Now, the Steam Deck has a plethora of tools that you can use to get your games running perfectly, be it built-in Fidelity FX super resolution, manual clock control, frame rate limiting, or other options accessible in the Quick Access Menu's performance tab. No matter what it is, the deck delivers a phenomenal degree of control over your device. But two of the most important features are the display's refresh rate and the performance overlay. While you're playing on the deck, you may find that some of the more taxing AAA titles have a volatile frame rate that sits comfortably over 40 FPS in most instances, but that struggle to maintain a reasonable and stable frame rate. If that's the case, you have yourself a prime candidate for the refresh rate option. Open the quick access menu and go to the battery icon. Select the advanced view button and now scroll down to refresh rate. Press A and then move the range slider down to 40. This will set the screen's refresh rate to 40 and will limit the game's frame rate to 40 FPS. This should significantly help with the feel of the game, as well as with battery life. One thing to note is that by doing it this way, it will affect all of the games on your deck. If you don't want that to be the case, make sure you check the Use Per Game Profile switch before changing the refresh rate. Alternatively, if you change any value in this menu and then switch the Use Per Game Profile switch, the value you set previously will be universal and whatever you change afterwards will only be for the currently running game. And as a bonus, 40 Hertz mode is great for another reason too. It helps tremendously with battery life. Next up, upgrade your charging. Now, one of the biggest criticisms of the deck is its battery life. And while when you look at it objectively, the Steam Deck actually has a pretty impressive battery life compared to other PC handhelds and even the Nintendo Switch, subjectively, there is much left to be desired. That's why charging is so important. Yes, the Steam Deck comes with a charger that is more than enough to keep it charged while you play, but the deck's charging cable is perplexingly short, only about five and a half feet long. So that's why I immediately went out and bought a charger and cable. Now I bought this 60 watt anchor charger and this 10 foot 100 watt cable to go with it. Now 60 watts is overkill for charging the deck, but since it has two ports, I can charge my tablet or my phone while also charging my deck using the same device. Now I've been using this charger cable combo for about a year at this point and I've been super happy with it. And there's a link in the description if you wanna pick them up for yourself. Next up, connect to your TV. 
Now the deck provides a consoleized PC experience and as such, fittingly will dock with a TV. And now is a great time to do it, seeing as the software has finally given us the ability to set the output resolution within the last few months. Now Steam Deck does not have a video out port on its own. Instead, you need a dock or a USB hub with video out in order to connect it to your TV. There are many great solutions for this too, ranging from inexpensive to worth the investment to probably not worth it. For example, I've had this adapter that I've used with my Switch for years, and it worked day one with my Steam Deck. There are others that offer more features, but few can beat the official docking station from Valve. It has what I consider to be a perfect design with all the features that you need. Ethernet, Type-A USB ports, and of course, video out. Not only HDMI, but DisplayPort too. And while $80 might seem steep at first blush, it also comes with an official charger, meaning that you can leave this plugged in and just connect your deck and you're good to go. And while you're docking your deck, you can also connect some controllers. So let's play some games with our friends. If you haven't realized it already, the deck is ideal for local multiplayer. Ranging from indie titles to major publishers, local multiplayer is well represented here. And as we discussed, the deck has built-in Bluetooth. That means that you can use Xbox Series controllers, DualShock 4s, the DualSense line, Switch Pro controllers, Joy-Cons, or even quality third-party offerings like 8BitDose Pro 2. To connect your controllers, Put them in pairing mode and go to settings, Bluetooth, and then add your controller. From here, you can reorder your controllers in the quick access menu by going to the gear icon and hitting the rearrange controller order button. The deck natively supports all of these controllers and each one can be customized using Steam input, just like we talked about earlier. Furthermore, most buttons are recognized by the deck and will show the correct iconography in the menu bar and in a lot of games. As far as which one you should choose, well, if you're looking for input parity with the deck itself, the closest in my book is the DualSense. It has gyros, analog triggers, and a single trackpad that can do a lot with Steam input, plus better rumble than most of the other options. And you can use the links below to pick one up for yourself. So what do you think? Did I forget something? Leave me a comment and let me know. Now, if you believe in the work that I'm doing, you can buy me a coffee using the links below. Become a YouTube member, a patron, or a ViewSync Premium subscriber, and you can get your name listed over here. And thanks. It's because of the folks that you see on screen that I'm able to continue making these videos. That's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for watching and spending time with me here today, and I'll see you in the next one.